picture that I choose in your scene here. Uh, right now I'm going to hit shift up and what that will do in our timeline it brings us to frame 250 uh, and that's great because uh, that's where the first part of this is going to be our scene we're going to import our scene uh, but I'm going to import it in just a little bit first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit space and add a movie I'm going to go to where I have my movie clips that I took this weekend uh, saved and I'm going to start importing them now blender is designed to do short little clips uh, so it only allows you, as far as I know, to import one clip at a time, which can be a pain if you have a bunch. Uh, hold down Control, and that will help snap to that line you have there. Hit Space, and notice I'm choosing Movie, not Movie, plus Audio, because I don't want any audio from these clips. Uh, if you want to use the audio from clips, use Movie, plus Audio. Uh, control again, it will snap it right to the end of the other video. If you don't hold down Control, you can overlap the videos. See, it turns red when they're overlapping. Control will snap them when they get close. I'm going to add just a, a few more here. And there we go. I'm not going to add all the images. At this point, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change our project length to the length of our video here. I'm going to go a little bit further out from the video because I'm going to have the audio go a little bit longer. But you can see we're at frame. 839 so let's change this to 839 and hit enter now we can come here and hit alt a and it gives us a little preview of our video up in the preview window here you can change the size of this by scrolling in and out you can also make it full screen by hitting control up arrow with the mouse over this window and then you can scroll in, in and out alt down to bring us back out let's add some audio uh, Blender's a little picky about audio. Uh, you can import MP3s, but they don't always work that great. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over here to my command prompt. I'm in the folder with my music files, and I'm going to hit FFmpeg-I for input file. And I'm going to type 10, because track 10 is the one I want. I'm going to hit tab, and it auto-completes. And then I'm going to name the output file BG for background and I want it to be a wave file so I'm going to do .wave and hit enter. It takes just a few seconds and we've got a, a wave file created. If you're not a command line type of person uh, you can use a graphic interface like Audio City and um, what you can do is import the video and then just choose export, OK and choose wave file and click save. Uh, but I already did it uh, and named it BG Wave. So I'm going to hit space and in this case I'm going to choose audio from RAM since I'm just doing an audio file I'm finding that that's working pretty good for me. I'm going to go to where I have my WAV file saved also choosing audio from uh, from RAM and using a WAV file you get a nice little uh, view of what the WAV looks like which is nice if you're trying to line up the clips with the music you can actually see what's going on. Right now I'm going to click over here. I have the audio file selected. I'm going to press K and that cuts. And I'm going to right click here and hit delete to delete the rest of that audio. So now we can click here and hit Alt A. We got our music going and our video clips. Let's do a little fade out of the audio. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click the audio clip. Click about here where I want the audio to start fading out. You'll see the green line corresponds up here. This is our IPO editor, which is for keyframes. We got one here, which is the normal volume of the audio, and zero down here, which is audio muted, basically. So we're going to hit Control, click where that green line is, set a keyframe there, and then I'm going to go to about where the audio file is ended. You'll see the green line moved over here. I'm going to Control and click there. So now our audio will fade out. Nice. Hit escape to get out of that. We're going to have the video fade out now. So uh, right click up here because if you have the audio file selected it will tell you you can't add a color generator when you have audio selected. Hit space and choose color generator. Move this little square right to here. We have it selected if we go to our little uh, sequence button editor here. We can change the color of it to black. Then we're going to right click this first clip and then shift click the black clip hit space and go up to gamma cross and add a little transition there so now you can see it fading to black. Perfect, so we have our audio fade out, our video fade out. Let's add our scene in. Let's quickly save it too. 
uh, control S and save that. Uh, we're gonna hit space and I'm gonna add scene and I'm gonna choose just scene because that's our 3D scene. I'm gonna move it here, I'm gonna hit control and it should snap right there to that video. Now you'll see if you click over here it starts rendering it, it takes a second because it's got to render that 3D view. If you render the 3D view up first you can import the video and you can avoid this lag. If I try playing this now it's going to play really slow trying to render each frame. That's why I imported it last because I didn't want to accidentally click on that. It could just cause problems. So now I'm going to hit uh, right click on our, our black uh, clip there, Shift D to clone it, drag it here, I'm going to click on the end of it here and hit G, stretch it out a little bit. Then I'm going to right click the scene that, that we imported and then Shift click that color, space, gamma cross again, Shift click the color, Shift click the next clip, gamma cross, and what that does is it will fade the scene to black and then fade in our next project. And we are pretty much done. Just a few things left to do is render it. We're going to go to our render window here and we are going to choose uh, which I've already gone over, FFmpeg. The format you want to save to, I'm going to choose MPEG2 in this case. Choose audio because we have audio now. Choose that and then choose what format you want the audio to be in. If you're doing a, a DVD uh, format here, if you do MPEG2 you can choose a DVD preset and then choose MPEG-2 uh, it will be fine for DVD. Uh, if you're still going to be working on the project I always suggest doing a DV format that way you have a top quality export and then for anything else for distribution put it on DVD then do MPEG or, or there's actually a lot of formats MPEG-4, AVI, QuickTime, uh, XVID, uh, FLV which is a flash format um, and AVI you'll have choices to do like uh, DivX compression and stuff I believe. Uh, yeah right there MPEG4 DivX. So just choose the format you want make sure you choose the aspect, aspect and ratio you want and uh, then the most important part is don't forget to click do sequence otherwise it won't render the sequence it will only render the 3D view which is actually empty in this scene so click that name choose where you want to save it and name it over here you can click this to choose the folder you want to save it in and then click animate and it'll animate from frame 1 to 839 which 839 is right out here where our audio of our video ends so that's how you do this short little clip in blender uh, I hope you enjoyed this hope you learned something like I said I assume that you know the basics of blender uh, when I'm teaching these tutorials so if I move too fast Go back to some of my Blender basic tutorials. I have basics on the sequencer, at least three or four on just doing stuff in the sequencer, and then I have a bunch of beginner Blender tutorials on the 3D view. So uh, for more videos and tutorials like this, visit filmsbychris.com. Uh, the link for that's in the description, along with the link for the uh, TrueType font website I was talking about.